welcome to Tips with Andrew. I am Andrew Sapiano. Thank you so much for joining me on this happy Saturday. I hope you guys are having an awesome weekend so far. I hope you're rocking out whatever goals, hopes, plans, plans, dreams, ambitions you had for the week and are currently in the rest and recovery mode of it. And um, I hope you guys are rocking out and having an awesome weekend so far. Um, quick update, couple quick updates actually before we get started. This, until the end of the month, actually doTERRA has come out with a, a special surprise BOGO deal. So buy Spearmint and you get Citronella oil for free. Sorry, Spearmint oil. And you get Citronella oil for free. Um, Spearmint is great for uplifting the mood. It's, um, you know, it, it's also actually used as um, uh, to uh, freshen the breath, which is great. Citronella is awesome for this time of year, especially keeping the bugs away and helping in that regard. It's also a natural cleansing agent. Um, so I believe it wholesales for about $48 plus tax and shipping. So if you're interested in that, definitely drop me a comment, send me a message. Um, what, uh, June 10th, doTERRA Canada is actually doing a presentation about essential oils and sort of why you should be interested and how you can uh, use or what, what can you do? You can uh, reduce your toxic load in your life and um, I'm super excited for that coming up. It's $10 um, for entry fee. It's going to be an online um, uh, what is it? Uh, webinar, I guess we'll call it broadcast if you want to call it. So definitely, um, uh, now's the time to sign up. You actually get four free samples of oils, uh, if you sign up. So definitely, um, I've already got my ticket on its way and I'm super excited for it. Another update convention tickets have officially gone on sale and that is in September. Um, if, if you are interested in going to the event, there is live tickets available. Um, it's gonna be held in Utah at the Utah Jazz Stadium. Uh, it is also gonna be available virtually online, and that is where I am excited to um, partake in. You also get, the, there's also the swag box that comes out. That's super exciting. I'm awesome, I'm, I'm so excited for that. So if you're interested in early bird access to convention tickets, they will eventually go up in price. So now is the time to get that. Definitely reach out to me and we'll get you on that. Last update, I have officially launched a weight loss course for beginners. Uh, discover five little known secrets to losing weight. If you or somebody you know of is interested in getting access to it, it is an online digital course for download. Definitely drop me a comment, send me a message saying me, and we'll get you rocking and rolling. There's tons of cool stuff that comes along with the initial launch, and I'm, and it's, I'm super excited to get it out there into the universe. All right, that's all we've got for you for the updates. Tons of cool stuff going on over here. Oh, I'm super excited. What a great time to be alive right now. Um, and it's the weekend. So what? let's get into today's topic. What I wanted to talk a little bit about today was it is actually national what reading or map reading week or read a map week, learn how to read a map, something like that. So I thought what perfect time to talk about having direction in your life right? Finding direction, finding purpose, right? Finding, you know, what you actually should be excited about in life. Because especially over the last little bit, right? We've been going through some stuff. And, um, you know, if you're not making, if you're not really making a conscious effort to look on the bright side of things, right? It can be very easy for you to get down on yourself and um, not really look towards anything into the future. So that's where I wanted to come in and give some tips that help me sort of, uh, what, weather the waves, if you will, weather the storm, uh, ride the waves, right? I don't know, whatever cliche you want to call it. And uh, so I wanted to give some tips that help me. Hopefully they help you too. Hopefully you get some value out of them, right? Yeah, so let's go. Here we go. Let's get right into it. First off, water. Definitely want to make sure you're drinking your water, <laughs> no matter what's going on in your life. Tip number one, know where you want to go. This one is really all about finding right, your end game, right? Where do you want to go? What does your life look like? What 
is different in your life than is now or is anything different, right? Are you living the life that you set out for yourself? Um, are you doing the things on a daily basis that make you happy or are you just kind of going through the motions, you know, <laughs> wait for the weekend uh, so you can sort of, really, you know, pick a time to relax in that aspect, right? But this one is, is really all about it's really all about picking where you want to go. I think I, I, think I should have made that the, the tip instead is, is picking where you want to go, right? Do you want to, to have something different? There's a, gr a really good quote that I read. Um, you know, if you would like something different, if you want what you don't have, you have to do what you haven't done. Right? So do you want something different in your life? Is your life awesome right now? Do you want to keep going the same way that you are? Which is awesome. If you are living your best life right now, definitely keep going on that. This tip's probably not for you because you've already gotten where you want to go. But if you're not living your best life right, and you're just kind of going through the motions, just kind of waking up and reacting to life as opposed to acting in your life, um, this is a definite one right here. Pick a new direction. This is right. This is exactly you can map out where you want to go based off of what what is important in your life. If something is important in your life, you tend to gravitate more towards that, right? If something's not really that important, you kind of let it go to the wayside, and then you know a couple weeks later, you're like, oh man, I definitely should have done that. Oops. But this one is really all about. You know, picking your end game, knowing what what you want to do really with your life. If you had the chance to live right your perfect life, if you know everything around you was the way that it was supposed to be, what would that look like, right? Know where that what that looks like, so that you can create a picture on how to get there. Leads me to my next tip: get a journal. Number two is get a journal. Definitely. You need a journal because you have to know on your, your path to where you're going, what you're doing, right? If you're even on the right path, if you need to change, you don't know what you don't know. So that's why we need to figure out, or sorry, that's why we need to document our journey. We need to, um, you know, everything that happens in our life needs to be documented. We need to know what what sort of things are working. We need to know what sort of things are not working. And we can only know that if we have uh, written down what, what has actually happened. Very few people I meet, Tina's one of those. She's one of those people that can really vividly remember um, events, you know, basically as they happen. Me, I'm not so good at that. And most people that I meet are not so good at that. There's very few people that can vividly remember events um, you know, few in the future time to, to recall that, right? So that's why we need to get a journal. We need to get something that we can document on, you know, that to our journey in order to know if we need to make adjustments to, um, uh, to, you know, to change what we're doing or if we need to just stay the course, right? We don't, again, I reiterate, we don't know what we don't know. So we could be doing something really good, but not know it. And then we make a tweak to it and that throws us completely off course. But we didn't know that because we didn't document it. I'm not talking, um, if you're going to write down in a journal on paper, I definitely suggest something that you can take with you. For me, I love using something pocket sized that I can just take with me uh, on the go so I can write down events as they happen. Um, for you, that may not be something that is applicable. Like I mentioned, Tina's got a great memory. So maybe she picks something that she can go back on throughout the day at home, right? She's got uh, this cute binder at home that she uses. I don't know. Um, and then that just allows her to, uh, you know, document the day's events. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be on paper, right? You can definitely use your phone and talk into your phone, talk, or you can um, you can type on your computer, right? For some people, writing for a long periods of time is not a thing. Um, arthritis is a real deal. Uh, maybe typing on the computer is a lot better. Maybe typing, right, all day, or maybe you work at a desk job and you don't actually feel like typing anymore. So that's where the camera might be better, right? You videotape yourself talking about events that happen. And I, I feel like if you're talking to yourself, you could probably think of, uh, um, you could probably recall events um, more, more better. 
maybe, <laughs> as, as they happen, then, um, you know, then if you're just typing it or if you're just trying to write it down as is, I don't know, maybe it is, but find something that you can document your journey so that you know what's working and what's not. Number three, face your fears. There's always something that we're afraid of in life. Um, and you know, it's not, there's, I, I like learning, I, or I, I like the way that I learned about this one <clears throat> is that there's uh, two real, there, I don't, I can't really remember how it was specifically explained to me, but the gist of it is there's things that we are actually afraid of, right? Bears getting hit by a truck, um, you know, uh, getting, you know, uh, something happening to our children, right? And then there's things that we, that are, there's perceived fears, right? How people look at us, uh, how people think of us how we think that we might be portrayed, um, you know, what people might say about us, right? So there's things in life that we actually need to be afraid of. And then there's things that we are perceived to be afraid of. And, they're, they're, and those perceived fears are a lot worse than the actual fears because the actual fears, you know, and you can pretty much uh, take into consideration and work your life around them. But the perceived fears are the ones that hold you back and hold you and, and really, uh, not allow you to live the life that you may that you maybe want to. I mean, like I mentioned before, maybe you're already living your best life and there's nothing that you would change and that's awesome. For that, I applaud you and you are great. But for the rest of us that don't really have too much idea about what's going on, um, you know, we're just kind of going through the motions on a daily basis. We are afraid of, you know, and it could be afraid of fear of failure, right? What, what, you know, what, what are people going to think about us, right? Again, fear of what are people going to think about us? Fear of we're not good enough, right? A fear of success. What happens if we do succeed, right? What does success look like? That's another thing too, right there. That's kind of like a side tip off of facing your fears is know what success looks like. If you don't know what success looks like, then you don't have any real way of determining whether you've made it, right? We don't, if, if you don't have an idea of what it looks like when you're there, how do you know if you've got there, right? Or you've been there and you may have left. You don't know because you don't know. That's why we need to face, face our fears. We need to just, I, I feel like we need to just do it, right? Like another quote that I love, um, you know, is something along the lines of life is going to pass you by, um, no matter what. So we can either live it or we can be, you know, a, a slave to it, right? So that's where I, I like to, you know, for me, it's not really a big problem to, you know, really not, for lack of a better term, care about what people think uh, and just do what I know needs to be done. But for other people, that's a huge thing, right? P people, People can be downright mean. <laughs> I, like, I'll be the first to say it. People can be rude and they can really say, you know, things that you don't really think that should be said. And that's, you know, that, that's a problem for another day. But again, that's just a perceived fear. For as many people as you think are laughing at you or not supporting you, I promise you there's that many people that are looking that don't say anything to you. Because I am... One of the things that I read was uh, people that, that don't like you or don't like something, tell about 21 people. People that are impressed with something, tell about three, right? So it, it's seven times more likely that you're going to hear something negative than you are something positive. So I, I promise you there's a lot of people out there that are rooting for you and want to see you do good and they're just not there talking to you. It's not a thing that's going to come up in a conversation. But people that can, you know, point at you and laugh and really, you know, look at the, the goofy side of things, they, you know, they're in it for a different reason. And there's nothing really you can do about that. One of the things that I, that I, that I, re that I remember reading more than anything or hearing is, uh, you know, there's really only nine real nasty people in the world, right? Real mean, real nasty. Now, they move around a lot, right? So you're liable to get one every once in a while. But when you get them, you just say, that's okay. There's only eight more of you in the whole world. I can deal with that. That's no problem at all, right? So <laughs> people are going to be there always just, uh, you know, just, I, 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 I'm, you know, you got to, you got to, sometimes you just have to do what you got to do, right? It, it's just that simple. So 
We are talking here on National Learn to Read a Map Week, I think, <laughs> of how to find direction in life. Number one, know where you want to go or pick where you want to go. Number two, get a journal so you can document your journey. Number three, face your fears. Number four, don't overthink it. No, I, I, I read this one, um, I know the difference between thinking and overthinking, right? We can overthink things till the cows come home and we can, and we can think and we can rethink and we can plan and we can replan and, you know, okay, no, it, it's Saturday, right? Nobody starts to do things on Saturday. We're going to wait till Monday. Okay, Monday comes around and, you know, I'm not really feeling it uh, or it is, it, it's cloudy out and I want to wait till sunshine. Sunshine means happiness, right? We can't start things on a, on a, on a cloudy day. Come on, that just... That's just bad omens. We gotta wait till the sunshine comes out. And oh man, you know, I gotta go see, I gotta go see my buddy, I gotta pick up some things, and then I gotta go to the grocery store, and then okay, no, then we then we won't think about this. Okay, then we won't do this until later in the week, and then that's later in the week, and then we can't start anything on a Thursday, right? We gotta wait till Monday. People start things on Monday, right? And you can see how we can think and think and overthink, and we can, you know, just drive ourselves into the ground and not actually get anything productive done. That's why we need to not overthink things. We need to, uh, what, what was the one thing that I, I, I love this one is um, um, imperfect action or what? Perfect inaction. No, there you go. Imperfect action is way better than perfect inaction, right? So get something done. Know, the, you know, know, the, know when you're starting to overthink things and just start doing something. Um, don't spend so much time in the thinking, planning, um, you know, what if stage. Spend some time in the doing stage, right? Don't always uh, lean back to, you know, what if, or, you know, maybe I need to do this, or maybe if I'd only do that, or, you know, how can I do this, or, you know, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Just do it. Understand that, you know, there's a higher power at play here. So, um, one of the things that I, that I read was, um, uh, act like the person you want to become. So when you're, when you're overthinking things, right, just start acting like the person you want to become. And that should clear up some focus for you. If it doesn't, definitely come back here and tell me how acting like the person you want to become didn't change your life at all. And I would love to hear that story behind that. Number five, think positive. We have to think positive because thinking negative just brings out negativity in everything. I mean, think about realistically, right? When you're talking to somebody and they're super down and they're super negative and they, you know, they, they don't really care about anything and they're just trying to try and, and you know, they're just trying to get emotion out of you and they're just trying to bring the, the overall, um, the overall uh, atmosphere down, if you will, environment, right? Those people, they're not really fun to hang around with. We tolerate those people because all of, uh, you know, there is there is certain time and place for everything and we can't always tell people what we want to, but it's not, it doesn't mean that we like them, right? Liking somebody and tolerating somebody is two completely different things. Let me tell you that. So. We also know the, the flip side of that coin, right? The guy that's very positive, the person that's very uplifting, right? He's always in a good mood, right? So most people think they're weird or they're on something, right? But they're, they're just happy to be there. They're really positive at life. Good things happen to them because they put good vibes out there, right? That's the, that's the universe at work, right? It, doing good things, good things, or doing good things, good things have to happen to you. It's the law of cause and effect. It's a law, baby. Um, so think positive. If you think in positive terms, you will achieve positive results. And if you think in negative terms, you will achieve negative results, right? And whether you believe that or not, you're right. So why not think in positive terms? If you're right, why not, right? If you're right, then you could think in negative, and that's awesome too, if that's the way that you wanna be, but I can't see anything really positive coming into your life if you're constantly thinking negative. That's why we think positive. Number six, dream big, right? Dream big, why not? Everything, if you're, if you're in, if you've been an adult for any, you know, a respectable amount of time, you are pretty much where you are because that's where you want to be more than anything in your life, right? And, and 
one of the one of the things that I read, actually a really great quote that I read was, um, "We are all self-made, but only the success the successful will admit it." Right? Anybody that's that's a success will tell you that they are self-made and they did it and. You know, it took hard work and determination. I actually love Snoop Dogg's quote. Uh, he, uh, he got an, uh, an Emmy Award, and he said that I would like to thank me, <laughs> right? All the hard work that I put in, and all of the, you know, every time somebody said that I couldn't do it, and every time people put me down, I rose through. And that's what he said, and that was awesome. I love that one. That's somebody that is knowing that they made it because they are self-made. Somebody that's a failure, they, they failed because of the government. They failed because of the economy. They failed because of the weather. They failed because they're not in the right place. They failed because they're, not, they're too young. They failed because they're too old. They failed because they're too smart. They failed because they're too dumb. They failed because they're too rich. They failed because they're too poor, right? Everything, everything happened to them. That's why they couldn't become a success. People that are successful, everything happened to them and that's why they're a success, right? So that's where dream big because you are in your life because that's where you want it to be, right? So why don't we change that and we start dreaming a little bit bigger, right? We want a bigger, and it can be even just simple as we want a bigger house, right? We want a bigger car. We want a bigger bank account. We want a bigger, you know, I, I, <laughs> I want a bigger pair of pants, right? I want a bigger garden. Anything you want to. Dream bigger. Dream to the max. There's a, what? The Lotto Max commercial, right? Why dream to the min when you can dream to the max, <laughs> right? And, and that's actually a really great line to live by, right? Why dream to the minimum when you can dream to the maximum? What's, what, what could possibly go wrong by dreaming big? I don't know. Again, that's another one. If you dream big and, you know, your life completely went, crashed and went south, definitely come back and tell me how dreaming big is not a good tip for finding direction in your life and I will gladly hear what you have to say. My last tip more than anything is essential oils. Uh, essential oils that for finding direction in life, I actually have a few here and uh, I really liked picking these ones for a few reasons. The first one I got here is Balance. Uh, Balance is the grounding blend from doTERRA. And um, that one's full of oils that are, you know, they're, they're, they're really on the, the calming, relaxing side. Um, I love using that one on the bottoms of my feet when I wake up in the morning, just as like a nice grounding, uh, you know, keep me balanced right off the bat. Um, you know, when, when emotions ride too high, it can be really hard to concentrate, right? And when emotions are really low, it can be really hard to dream big, right? So that's why we need to get some balance and sort of even out the playing field so that we can really, you know, be focused and concentrate better. Another oil that I have here is frankincense. And frankincense, I mean, outside of being the king of oils, uh, it's basically good for everything. So, I mean... One of the ones that I like using this one is it's really great for calming and, and, and bringing you, uh, you know, at peace with yourself and, and, and sort of with the earth, right? If you follow me for a little bit, um, finding direction in life really requires, you know, a certain, you know, extra, that extra gear that we need to find, right? An extra sort of, uh, you know, a, a step outside of our comfort zone, if you will. And frankincense is really great for helping you control those emotions and uh, focus your energy in a specific way. And then my last oil here is tangerine. And I put this one in here because that's actually my favorite oil. And I mean, when we're finding direction in our life, when we're trying to change things for the better, when we're trying to look at things a different way, we need to be happy, right? Am I wrong? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But for me, I like to be happy. Tangerine makes me happy. It's one of my favorite oils and I love it. That's why I put it in here. It find the, basically what I'm trying to say is find the oil that makes you happy and use that one to your advantage. That's all I got for you for today, folks. I really hope you enjoyed this. I know I had some fun making it. Feel free to share this with your friends, a family member, perhaps somebody from your team that you feel needs to hear this. If you'd like to learn more about essential oils or how to get your hands on some of this cool stuff that I'm talking about, definitely drop me a comment, send me a message saying me, 
and we'll get you rocking and rolling. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your weekend, and I look very forward to talking to you again. I love you guys. Bye for now.